Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Morrison. And what I want to do in this video is take a look at James 2.14. And I just want to do a very quick overview of this uh, very controversial passage. It's widely discussed, lots of videos on it, lots of commentaries written on it. And it's so popular, so, so controversial. Uh, this is the reason why Martin Luther famously referred to this passage as th this whole book as the epistle of straw. It does not seem to mesh well with uh, Paul's claim that justification is by faith alone. And of course, the faith alone is a central premise of much of uh, Protestant reformed oriented theology. And so how do we interpret this passage given the apparent conflict with Paul? So I want to quickly offer my take on this. This is gonna be a very short take of that particular controversial issue. Uh, what I want to do is also have you keep your eyes out for a longer verse-by-verse -verse analysis of this particular passage in its context. It'll be a much longer video. I have an eye up for that later tonight or perhaps tomorrow. So let's go ahead then and look at the passage itself. And I have it pulled up here in the World English Bible. And here's the passage. What good is it, my brothers, if a man says he has faith but has no works? And then here's your key phrase, can faith save him? Now, off the top, depending on which translation you have uh, gotten used to, this translation may strike you as interesting. And I want to point out this actually does a very good job. Oftentimes, we'll say something like, can that faith save him or can such a faith save him? This is, I think, the proper translation. They're following the King James here, which is, I think, correct. Can faith save? Now, off itself, this should immediately give you indication that something is a little different than perhaps we might be inclined to think about this. He's not saying, can that kind of faith save? The question is, can faith save? And I can tell you, he's clearly expecting the answer to be no. Faith does not save in any sense of the word, not for James. And so one of the places to start is always look at context. And there's a lot of context we can look at, but I think the immediate context, verse 13, does tell you what James was talking about and the transition he's going in. He's talking about judgment is without mercy to him who shows no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. James has been talking here in this immediately preceding passage about how we treat other people and that we're expected to show mercy if you would do acts of mercy towards others. And if you don't show mercy, you will be in fact judged. Now, it is in this context, he then says, so what is good does it have to say you have faith, but then have no works? And so keep those acts of mercy in mind with the context of words. Can faith save? And again, he's going to say no. Then he gives an example that I think ties well into this mercy piece. It talks about a brother and sister being naked in need of food. Now you go say, hey, be warm, be filled. You don't do any acts of mercy. You don't do anything that's needed for the body. Here's your key phrase, what good is it? So he says, even so faith, if it has no works, is dead. Here's your famous phrase, faith without work. He's going to go on and say, so faith without works is dead. Another wonderful translation point. Very often at this point, you will have someone say, but someone may say. Many people will take verse 18 and 19 or even 20 down as an objector. I think that, again, the WEB has this right. Uh, see the longer video for a detailed translation. But here, yes or indeed is the proper translation of the Greek here. Yes or indeed. He's calling in a witness. A man may well say, you have faith, I have works. I would continue the quotation mark. I think the quotation continues. I think the witness is saying, yes, indeed, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works. Hint, you can't. I'm going to show you by my faith by my works. So what James is arguing so far is that faith cannot save anyone. Works are necessary to bring about salvation from judgment. Now, this, again, seems like we're making the problem worse rather than better, because how could you possibly say faith that, that works saves when, James, when Paul so clearly said he is not? And I think that's where understanding the definition of salvation and then the rest of the passage is going to come in. I'm not going to do the rest of the passage in detail, but read it through and just note that what he offers here is Abraham does a work. He offers his son Isaac, and as a result, he is justified, and he's explicitly called in his justification a friend of God. You have Rahab, 
who did uh, good work in saving the spies. And as a result, her life was spared. She, she uh, was saved from judgment. And so faith without works is dead, meaning that faith doesn't save. Final point then, what does it mean to save? What it is wor really worth noting here is that James is probably the first book written in the New Testament. It was probably written before the Acts 15 Jerusalem Council, which means this is probably written in 44, 45, 46 AD. Long, this is before Paul has become widely known. It is probably inappropriate to imagine that, Paul, that James is writing in response to Paul's salvation by faith through, apart from works document. James is using the word save here in the same sense the Old Testament uses the word save, which does not mean to save from hell. Very quickly, here's a tool. I'm going to go to blueletterbible.org just because if you don't read Greek, this is an easy way to do it. If you go to James 2.14 there and you click the tools, you can scroll down to the word save and you'll see this is the Greek word save. You click the Strong's number, you'll see this Greek word is sozo. Sozo. Now, first of all, just look at the general definition. To save, to keep sound, to rescue from a danger or to rescue from destruction. This can include suffering. This can include disease. And if you were to go down further, you could see how the word sozo is used in the Greek translation of the Old Testament, which James was very familiar with. So if you click this and you scroll up, we can see all the places sozo is used in the Old Testament. I would encourage you to look at these, but I want to show you just the book of Proverbs, because Proverbs is typically understood to be the wisdom literature of the Old Testament, and that James is regarded as writing something similar. Look what it says here. Deliver thyself. That's the word sozo. Deliver thyself. That's the word sozo. The righteous shall be recompensed. That's the word sozo. Talk about departing or being saved from hell, and here hell beneath means the grave. So we see this again, this idea of uh, the person who trusts the Lord shall be safe, not just from hell, but from danger. What I want to propose is that what James is doing is talking about salvation in the proverbial, the Proverbs, Old Testament sense of the word, salvation from danger, which ties lovely, very well into the immediate context, mercy triumphs over judgment. If we refuse to do any acts of mercy, if we have good orthodoxy, you believe God is one, it says. You can be an orthodox Jew, a good Christian in the modern sense. You can believe all the right things, but if you don't actually help people, then the person is going to starve to death. It's not going to save them. Faith doesn't do anything. We don't need mere orthodoxy. We need to press on and let our faith become uh, fruit-bearing. A faith that doesn't bear fruit is a useless dead faith. So whether or not such a faith that's a dead faith will save you from hell or not, that's another conversation. What I want to suggest, strongly suggest to you is that when you're talking about uh, whether or not works are necessary for salvation, uh, whether they come out of uh, necessarily out of good works, and I think this passage pretty truly teaches they don't. Uh, faith does not naturally produce good works. And so the question that you might ask from Paul is, really not helpful in this context because it's, it's not even an issue he's considering. Paul is talking about justification before God in the sense of being declared uh, not guilty of sins and having eternal life. James is talking about something very fundamental and practical. So if you are going to argue that you need works to prove your salvation, you can argue that but you're going to need it from another verse than this one because this does not teach that uh, works are necessary for salvation in the sense of salvation from hell. What this simply teaches is that if you don't do good works, you and those around you are going to suffer, that your faith is not going to make anybody's life any better whatsoever. Your mere orthodoxy doesn't help. So again, uh, keep an eye out for the longer verse-by-verse -verse exposition of this video, of this same passage, and I'll see you back at the channel real soon. We'll continue the conversation. In the meantime, I'll also comments down below for this quick, uh, quick overview, and maybe I'll get a chance to respond to you there. Thanks. God bless.